If you've been on the internet in the last two years, you've probably seen all of these regrowing kitchen scrap hacks. Lost them, baby. Gotta love them. Turns out, most of them don't give you what you want, or even if they do grow, it doesn't grow into something you can realistically use. So we're going up to Chris in Vancouver, BC, who's been growing out all the popular kitchen scrap hacks you see to see just how many work and how many are garbage. If you are looking to grow more food from your kitchen scraps, there are some important things that you need to know to see a higher level of success. Now, with those viral regrowing hack videos, oftentimes they are not that helpful because they are very unrealistic with how plants actually grow. And they oftentimes show these really weird and inaccurate time lapses of one thing growing into something completely different. So in today's video, we will help you understand which scraps have a higher chance of giving you more food and which ones are better off left as being experiments. To do that, we will go into plant morphology or the physical parts of plants to get a better sense of why certain plants or parts will or won't push out more parts for us to eat. And knowing this bit of information will help us set more realistic expectations of these little scraps. And hopefully that will help us uh, determine whether or not a certain scrap is worth our time. Probably the most captivating regrow hack videos are the ones around growing fruit like citrus, apples, cucumbers, mangoes, and kiwis. Now, the thing with these fruit is that even though you can harvest these seeds and grow something, it will likely take you years before you can grow the plant into something of a decent size to actually harvest fruit. This is especially true with citrus and apples. So commercially, these are grafted plants, meaning that they are not grown from seed. When you grow these from seed, they generally don't exhibit the same characteristics as the fruit that you harvested the seeds from. And also by grafting, commercial growers skip that baby seedling process because if you grow from seed, it will take many years before you can actually turn that seedling into a tree that you can harvest these beautiful fruit from. Sometimes it's not about the weight, it's about whether the seeds are duds or not. So if you are a fan of English cucumbers, they are seedless or near seedless. So if you look at the seeds, they're transparent, see-through, they've got nothing really going on inside. So if you try to grow them from seed, nothing's really gonna happen because nothing is there. Same goes with a lot of squashes, melons, and basically any fruit that is harvested under ripe or bred to not have seeds. So you're not really going to have any luck trying to grow these from seeds. With mangoes and the classic avocado, if you live in a warmer climate and you are okay waiting many years, I say go for it. But if you are in a cooler climate, be prepared to keep these plants as lovely indoor foliage plants, because if they are grown outside without protection of a conservatory or a greenhouse, they are not gonna be happy and they will not fruit. Although kiwi seeds are not technically scraps, since you can eat all of this, let me save you half a decade or so of waiting if you are considering growing kiwi plants from seeds. This is because kiwi vines, they can grow really vigorously. So if you can get your hands on a small cutting and get that rooted and in the ground, you will see kiwi fruit in a short amount of time. So now let's switch it up and talk about the vegetative parts of plants, which are the leaves, stems, and roots, as opposed to reproductive parts, which are the flowers, fruit, and seeds. Now, typically the vegetative parts grow a lot faster and more abundantly compared to, let's say, fruit. And thankfully, many of the kitchen scraps that we end up with will push out some sort of vegetative part for us to eat if given the right conditions, such as putting them in water or some moist soil and providing them with some light. And actually, I started a few of these scraps myself a few weeks ago, knowing that I would see some level of success from things like lettuce, celery, green onions, carrot and beet tops, as well as some other fun ones. So basically what I did was chop the parts um, similar to what you would see in those hack videos. I placed them in water and just kept refreshing it and also placed them in light and waited. So it's been about a week or so since I took my kitchen scraps and placed them into containers with a little bit of water. And they've been in the greenhouse in a well-lit spot, um, but not overly hot. And I do see some development, so let's take a look. Okay, let's look at the celery. 
So we do see some new leaves emerging, which is nice. But at the bottom here, no signs of roots coming out of this basal area. Same with the carrot, nothing really going on. I'm not really expecting anything right now. It's only been a week, but there is a little bit of new growth uh, where the leaves are. So that is maybe kind of promising. Over here, this is looking good. This is the base of the leek. So it's got a nice, healthy, intact stem uh, area where the roots are coming out. It's looking really good. I'm going to keep that in the water. And then here we have green onions. Very familiar. The roots are looking good. I mean, they were there to begin with. Um, but then the top part is looking nice and healthy as well. And those are probably ready to go into a container or the ground. Okay, the beet root will not sprout a new tap root, but we see these lovely greens right here. They are feeling nice. And out of this shoulder area, we are seeing new little leaves emerge. So that's a good sign. We've got the lettuce here. We've got two types, romaine, which is really common. Um, we see new leaves coming out, but the basal area, nothing quite yet, but that's okay. Just gonna keep that in water. And I thought I would just do um, a red leaf lettuce as well just to show that it does work as long as you keep this base intact. And actually over here, we see some new growth, which is good. And the leaves, of course, everything is looking nice and healthy. So if we're looking at this and going, wow, look at those roots. Well, this was actually taken from one of those clamshell or those bagged living lettuces. So what I did was just trim away the outside leaves and just left this center area intact. And these are pretty much ready to go into the ground or into a pot as a new baby plant. So it's been about a week since our first check-in when we were in the greenhouse. And I'm happy to report that those living lettuces um, that we planted into the soil directly from one of these hydroponically grown living lettuces, they seem to be doing quite well. The leaves feel quite turgid, like they're filled with water, and I do see new growth coming out of the center. Um, generally, they look really happy, so I'm happy um, because with one of these things, I mean, it depends on where you buy them from, but I got them for roughly uh, $3 each, and if I can get like three to four plants, that's a pretty good deal considering I get the plant that I can continually harvest from for the rest of the season, plus I get the salad out of it. So what I did was um, I obviously separated the plants and planted them, but I kept them in the shade just to acclimate them to the outdoors because let's remember, they weren't really meant to be plants that you plant in the garden. As you can tell, we are inside now just because the greenhouse is getting a little bit too hot and I don't want the heat to ruin our experiment. So this is kind of like the leftover of round one of living lettuce. Um, I'm not trying to grow it hydroponically in this cup because um, to do that properly, you have to supply it with nutrients and I'm really not set up to do that right now. So these guys are gonna go into the ground and I think they're gonna do just fine. Um, so continuing on with the lettuce, I did add this new larger romaine lettuce into some water earlier today because I wanna see if the size of this base makes a difference. So this was the first round, this was done two weeks ago and this romaine is only pushing out this little bit. Um, so it's kind of disappointing. Now I'm gonna see if the size of the romaine that you start with makes much of a difference. Um, everything else seems to be kind of hanging around, pushing out leaves, so the beet, the carrot, um, the celery, and the lemongrass is starting to show a little bit of something growing out of the base. And then the green onions and the leek, um, they are showing roots, so those can probably go straight into the soil very soon. Here we are today with the same kitchen scraps. Isn't that amazing? So before we talk about this amazing lettuce and the other plants, there are some other plants that are commonly tossed out because they seem like they're past their prime, but they are definitely worth regrowing in the garden. You probably have some sprouted potatoes or some old crusty ginger kicking around. If they are not overly crusty and mushy, you can probably tuck them into a container and let them leaf out and keep growing. So hopefully over time, they will produce these delicious underground parts. So potatoes, it would be this stem tuber part. And then for the ginger, it would be these delicious underground rhizomes. 
Same goes with onion, garlic, and shallots that have started to sprout the green from the top. Or if you're cooking and you've used the top part and you're wondering what to do with this base, if this basil plate or this short compressed stem area right above where the roots are coming out, if that thing is still intact, you can simply tuck that base into a shallow dish of soil, give it some water, it will sprout more green parts for you to harvest throughout the season. So with the leafy lettuce from that living bundle, here they are. Amazing. So after three and a half weeks or so living outdoors, they are practically brand new full size plants that you can definitely harvest from. So if I'm going to buy those bundles of living lettuces again, I'm totally going to do this setup um, by putting them into a container. And with the other lettuces, I did romaine. So this was the original one, very small, very little leaves, nothing in terms of roots. But here's the younger one where I chose a larger romaine. Big difference. It has, well, bigger leaves and it has roots. So this tells me start off with bigger and better quality scraps if you want to see some results. Um, also, the celery is pushing out leaves and roots as well as the lemongrass. So I would say all of these can go into containers now. So with the taproot scraps, I've got the beet and the carrot. And although we know that it's not gonna generate a big bulky taproot for us to eat, the leaves are where it's at. And for me personally, I would choose to use the counter space for the beets because the greens are very delicious and it's more abundant as well. Whereas the carrot, even though it is pushing out some fine roots, what it's going to do, even when we put it into a container or the ground, it's just going to push out more leaves. And although you can eat the leaves when the temperatures rise, this little plant is going to start sending up a flower stalk and the leaves are no longer going to be tasty. But that's not entirely a bad thing. If you let the carrot flower, a lot of the beneficial insects like hoverflies and lacewings really love the flowers. So it's actually worth tucking this into your garden. Speaking of flowers, here are some lovely white flowers belonging to Chinese broccoli or gailan. So I thought I would have some fun because I've never heard of people taking cuttings from this plant. So I followed propagation techniques, found a node, made a cut underneath to see if uh, roots would form. And here we have it. We have roots, but Chinese broccoli, as well as other brassicas like kales, cabbages, and broccoli, they are biennials, which means plant wrap up their life cycle after around a two-ish year cycle. And with the emergence of flowers, that signals the end of their life. And what that means for us hungry humans is that if we turn this into a plant, it's actually not going to pump out more leaves or stems for us to eat. So because of this, I'm not gonna bother tucking this into a container, knowing that it's on its last legs. And this applies to celery and carrots as well, as those are biennials. But the celery should be okay with harvesting the leaves until the flower starts to emerge. And we really have to keep a plant's life cycle in mind, especially when we're growing these fast growing plants like the lettuce. So with lettuce, they are annual plants, meaning they have an even shorter life cycle than the plants that we talked about earlier. So I'm going to try to prolong the life of these plants as long as I can by keeping them cool and hydrated and happy. But it's going to be inevitable as we enter the hot summer months that these are going to bolt. They're not going to taste good, but that's okay. I'm just going to remove them and replace them with more leafy kitchen scraps. So the main takeaway here, if your goal is to see a faster turnaround on getting parts to eat, go for plants that push out leaves and stems. These vegetative parts grow faster and more reliably, and they are the practical choice for many of our gardens. But if you are adventurous and want to experiment, you can go ahead and grow that kiwi from seed. Just remember to have fun with it. As you can see, there's more than meets the eye with these regrowing kitchen scrap packs. Not that they all don't work, but you just have to know what you're growing and what you're getting for it. So hopefully you learned something here from us over at Epic Gardening. Until next time, good luck in the garden. Keep growing, but do not grow worthless kitchen scraps. <laughs>